my goodness. And there it is. Wow, get the tension to go. Tournament director Robin Graves giving the announcements here. Looks like Hope Gramley is going to be kicking things off. If Hope looks familiar, it's because you watched her at the Queens. She made the stepladder finals as an amateur. Uh, still is not a member of the PWBA Tour. Uh, still going back uh, to get her master's degree. Uh, coming up in just about three weeks. She was already working on it this past summer. So a second championship round appearance of 2022. Here's Hope kicking things off. Leaves the 3 6. That one just inside a target. Hope really keeping the ball in front of her the whole way through match play. Kicks things off with an opening spare. We'll get our first look at Olivia Farwell coming up next. The number five seed fired 249 in the position round match uh, to put the pressure on Shannon O'Keefe. So talk about, uh, you know, having to show up against the best in the world, doing it to make your first show. So definitely some added motivation and confidence for Olivia. So we'll get our first look at her. Gonna have a little bit more ball speed, just as direct, 10 back to kick things off. So you're going right over between 16 and 17 at the arrows, not giving it away too much. And she also, just like Hope, kept the ball in front of her very well throughout match play. These two playing very similar lines. They can hook it if they want to. Uh, they've chosen not to because that's been the best line to the pocket all weekend. Looking for the early double. It's going to hold line through the nose and just the six pin. Both players going high on that left lane to start. trouble on the spare. The early bowling ball choices here uh, from what we've seen throughout or from these competitors, not uh, not surprised. That is the Storm Infinite Physics for Hope. It's a ball that helped push her to the qualifying lead after 12 games yesterday. Storm phase two for Olivia. Second, so I get back, mix him. Not going to get the seven out. Look here, right over 16. Another good shot. Just not able to get the seven. These players very familiar with competing against each other at the collegiate ranks. Both nationally ranked programs on the NCAA side. Kendry Sparball gets the job done, clean through two. The 
the thing I like from both players, it seemed to be, you know, we mentioned that uh, Hope has the previous step ladder finals appearance. First one for Olivia, but both players keeping it pretty light up there. I think the familiarity with each other from the collegiate sense uh, definitely makes it a little, a little easier to go out there and get those first few shots and get your get your feet underneath you here at USA Bowl. Third frame for Gramley. Up the hill, first strike on the board. From nearby Aubrey, Texas, has some family here. A couple of her teammates from over the years at McKendree as well. Great look there, Farwell takes care of business in the third, she's liked the right lane so far. Low angle look, crossing about 17. Flush, no doubt. And she's acting like she's been here before. Just walking it off, not much emotion, a little smile. Has been on TV before. She advanced to the semifinals of this year's Intercollegiate Singles Championships. She's taped on CBS Sports Network. Light with the two. Well, that looks like it's going to be the trouble lane, Aaron. Looks like that one was a little right. Hit like around 15 at the arrow. She was hitting, crossing 16 or 17. So that one doesn't quite make it back. There's not a lot of recovery, especially on the fresh. Switch to the plastic ball, no problem. Tried and true. Clean through four for Farwell. Pushes, gets the eight out. First double up in the step ladder goes to Hope Gramley. Well, that's your ideal line right there. Put it on the tracer. Right over 17 at the arrows. Doesn't get it really right at the tracer, like you said, Aaron. 10. It's kind of the out of bounds today. And 10 back. Three in a row in the fifth. Oh, oh, goodness, great shot. Wraps the 10. Take a look at that one right over 16. Bees, quick ring in 10. Be so mean, six pin. through four and a half frames. They're, they're, these two are friends. They had some food together after match play and were joking around. I'm sure there's a little, probably a little side bet going on between them. <laughs> 
Take a look at the, uh, the setup here. a look at where this ball crosses. Looks like right over 17. Maybe a little fast and the ball doesn't pick up. There's a huge amount of volume on this pattern, over 30 mils. And if you just get a little quick, it'll sail through the break. Using the Kegel Defense S oil for the Pepsi Classic. 44 feet in length. Going to stay with the reactive ball, hook into it, and first open. You can see she moved right to pick up the spare, but there is a massive OB there. And if you happen to miss the, the track, it catches that big volume and the lower friction surface and doesn't make it back. for the bounce back in the sixth. That looks better. Fantastic. You can see her looking down at her foot where she slid just to make sure. Sometimes you hit your target, but the ball doesn't do what you expect it to do. It could be you drifted a little bit more. And so it's, it's always a good idea to look down where you slid, make sure you didn't drift more than what you normally do or less. Something taught very, very often nowadays on the collegiate scene and the light mixer, the hook in the sixth, puts her up by 23. Hope just making really good shots. And I think when you get into this situation and you're not completely accustomed to it. Like you said, Aaron, both of these bowlers have bowled on TV. Hope actually made the Queens telecast. You do tend to get a little quick. Your adrenaline's flowing. You throw it a little harder. It's a pretty common miss. And this pattern in particular is not a pattern you want to be gassing it through the break. A 4-9 pops up. We've seen it all week on the twister pins. Really good shot. Just right over 17. She probably said, hey, let's, let's not throw this one through the break like the last one. And catches a little bit of it. High in the pocket, 4-9. Like you said, we've seen it so many times this week on these twister pins. Gonna have a chance. Oh, cut it too thin. Wow, oh, that's hard to do. That's harder than making it. Shoots it right off her strike line. And that's about as close as you can get without knocking it over. With the open in the seventh, an opportunity for Olivia now. Put up a strike here, put up the double, and basically even this matchup. Light again, 2 8. You can see it was, it was right of 15 at the arrows. That's right of where she's been trying to play. And the friction has not quite developed to the right yet. And the players, to me, look like they were playing pretty far to the left during practice, which probably doesn't bode well for that part of the lane, giving the players any room to throw to. Made the right adjustment on the spare. 2-8. 
two eight covered. Down by eleven. Still anybody's game at this point. Once again, Mexico's Tanya Lopez will be making her championship round debut. Coming up next, she will face the winner of Farwell Gramley. And folks, no, it's early. Let's not get too excited because it has time. But here on Bull TV, you know what we do. We have giveaways coming up. More on that shortly. Really good shot in the eighth. You can see she kept this one more in front of her. Between 16 and 17 at the arrows. Didn't get it very far to the right. It was even left of the tracer, and she just piped that one in there. We will be giving away a Brunswick Defender to one lucky Bowl TV viewer between the semifinal and final match here. So big thanks to Brunswick for their continued support of the PWBA Tour. Good shot here from Hope once again, right over her target. Maybe just didn't quite catch that one. Leaves a flat 10. As Kelly Kulik would say, 10 is great, 9 is good. And people are crazy. <laughs> she says that? She doesn't, but I feel that's the next lyric in the song. <laughs> Nice cover. So maintains the lead, but once again, Olivia working on the strike in the eighth can make this a one pin, pin excuse me, a one pin match when she steps up for her ninth and tenth, but great match to kick off our finals here at the Pepsi Classic. Exciting position round earlier today. The math was flowing. Ninth frame. <laughs> Delivers, and with that strike, she cannot be shut out now. High and tight, it's 18. It's the deepest we've seen her throw it at the arrows and it just lays off high flush. 216, the max score for Hope Gramley. 215 for Olivia Farwell. She's gotta figure out a way to get a strike on this lane. That's, that's what you gotta do to keep going on in these tournaments. She has been light the last couple of times. I think you just move your eyes a little bit left, make sure you don't leak it. That's what she did. Man, and that just would not make it around the corner. I mean, look where this ball crosses at the arrows. That was that was 18. But she jammed it in there with some extra speed. It's just hard to trust that you don't have that much room to play with. If you're going to move your eyes a little bit left, you're, it, it's kind of scary to keep your ball speed down because the last thing you want to do is big four here and give the match away. Third consecutive 2-8 combo on this lane. Good news is she doesn't have to come back here this game. Okay. Let's get a look at the spare conversion here. Right over 12. Shoots it off the strike line using a break point down lane. That still oh, it tried not to hook. New max score, 195. It puts the hope in the position of needing you know, essentially a spare and strike would get her to 196, so a few different ways to get there. Strike on the first ball, easiest way to do it, but Olivia still can apply pressure here. Another light hit, 245 to start the 10th. 
she's just she's making pretty good shots, Aaron. She's hitting 16, 17 every time, but it feels to me like she's just a little bit jacked up and throwing it through the break. And the open will just about do it here. Hope's just going to need three pins to officially lock it up and move on to face. Tanya Lopez in the next match. I was going to get three. All right. The two eight. Let's see if that continues to be a trend here on, uh, on lane 14. But uh, 16 at the arrows. And she's going to have to decide if she wants to keep her eyes in at around 18 and, and throw at that speed or if she's going to let her speed come down a little bit so she can try to miss right and get the ball back. All right, takes care of the spare. So we'll see. Yep, she is going to a different ball here, but looks like a phase two from here. So didn't waste uh, didn't waste much time to uh, make the switch. She didn't want you to see the ball. Okay. She's hiding it from the air. She is, yes. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Yep. Yeah, phase two. She also had a uh, global Zen Soul out uh, here for a little bit during the initial warm up. All right, that one uh, certainly made it through the pins. Folks, 193 to 171. Hope Gramley defeats Olivia Farwell. Congratulations to Olivia on a fantastic week. Uh, that performance in the position round, uh, definitely something we'll be talking about, and I'm sure uh, will be just the uh, kind of the first uh, first note in what's going to be a nice career on the PWBA Tour for her. Uh, but she's going to be finishing fifth here. And Tanya Lopez, you see her there in the green 900 Global jersey. Coming up next here on Bowl TV, she will be facing Hope Gramley. Get a couple of looks at Tanya here. Hope, you should mark the date. That's her first stepladder finals win on the PWBA Tour. I'm sure there'll be many more. I would, uh, it's scary to think how good these, uh, these youngsters are, JT. Well, sometimes you just need, I mean, Olivia, I think, was a little bit, uh, she had a lot of adrenaline going and pulled a pretty good game. She just missed the two spares, uh, the two pin combinations, and that ended up being the difference. But it's nice sometimes when you're trying to get your first win on TV to kind of get a, a freebie, you know, and, and Hope, Hope did have the ability to just kind of coast through that game and, and learn some things and try a different bowling ball there at the end. So she got some additional information. Uh, Tanya's probably going to be a little nervous, being her first show as well. So you got to like your chances if you're Hope. Now you're comfortable on the pair. You've seen it one game. You're bowling somebody who's never made uh, stepladder finals before on the PWBA. Uh, but you get through this match, and it, it sure doesn't get very easy. You're going to face two of the best on tour in Dasha Kovalova and Danielle McEwen. Do you see Dasha getting some warm-up shots as well? And they've really, I think, broken the lanes down uh, pretty far to the left, which I think is going to make them play a little bit tricky. I'm 
swimming in my head. I've been dreaming on the edge. Tanya, as the higher seed, does have choice of who will be starting this match. There we go. There's the hug. All right, Tanya's going to kick things off. Second match, PWBA Pepsi Classic. Step ladder finals taking place here, USA Bowl, Dallas, Texas. Just waiting for the scores to get the arrows in. Yeah, it looks like we'll be all set to go here. So welcome to your first PWBA championship round, Tanya Lopez. Nice little hit to, uh, to take care of business here in the first. Gets the four pin out late. Tanya Lopez on the board. I think it's key to get out of the gate with a, a strike or a spare. I think Tanya <laughs> understands that little fist bump there. Bramley matches the effort in the first. Grew up bowling here at USA Bowl, so very familiar with, with the venue, the nuances of this facility. Plenty of tournaments under, under her belt here. Sticking with the same ball she used in the first match. And liked those first two shots. Looks like the Storm High Road Pearl. For Tanya and an early double. See, she's a lot further left, crossing 20 at the arrows. Out to just right at 10, and she's like, act like you've been here before, young lady. No emotion. It's a good sign. about two hours to kind of process it, get ready for it, the practice session leading up to it. I'm sure some great words of advice from fellow teammate as part of Team Mexico, Sandra Gangora. Okay. 
And, oh, is it going to? Okay, all right, all right. Get a look at the pin action here. We've seen this a lot this week. Both the 710s and the Messengers. And that time breaks it up. Spare. She'll trail by just one pin. First strike, check. First double, check. First spare, check. I think she's ready, JT. He's going over to talk to Matt. Neil. Saying, yeah, I, I feel pretty good. I like this bowling on TV thing. So incredibly smooth. And the nine pin sneaks in there. Seen a bunch of these this week, too. Crosses right over 17, right where she's been hitting, just labeling that spot. And uh, Hope, uh, the self-proclaimed queen of solid nines. Well, how about that? Yeah, she said nobody, and you know, it's anecdotal, of course, but she feels like she leaves more solid nines than anybody. All tied up after three. Semi-final match awaiting Dasha Kovalova. Dasha actually walking over here right now to take a look at uh, the proceedings. Phenomenal shot continues. A phenomenal summer or summer for Hope. I mentioned the finish at the Queens, fifth place making this TV show. Her only other event on tour this year, uh, prior to the Dallas Classic Series, was the U.S. Women's Open. So not only did she uh, compete at uh, you know the, the toughest test in bowling, made match play, finished 14th. So I said, you know, there were some roller coasters this year with competing, then taking time off and school and competing again and having success, but wouldn't change the performances for, uh, for the world. Another good shot there for Tanya. See where the ball crosses at the arrows, right over 20. Might have been just a touch soft. But pretty good shot. Could also be seeing a little bit of transition. She's throwing quite a few shots now between practice and first few shots of the game. And it might be time for a move. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Slightly terrifying from this angle. <laughs> okay, we got it. We're good. We're good. Heart can go back down to 120 beats per minute. Tanya has controlled the pocket so far. And 
This actually looks like a ball change coming up here, JT, so. Interesting. Okay. It works. Gets the 10 to slide off the deck there. But she had the light hit to kick things off in the first. And then another light hit that almost 7 10 left the 7 only. We saw her go over and talk to Matt. Must be seeing something that said it wasn't quite there. Makes the change on the left lane. Still didn't quite make it all the way back, but able to get the strike. So, small adjustment coming up from there. Hope in the fifth. Oh! <laughs> well, if there's ever a hometown hit. Right over 17, which is where she's been hitting. Maybe a little fast. Rolls the two pin. Really good break. Take him when you can get him. Five out of the first six. Call it a tuna, JT. Three in a row. Leaves those pins flopping all over the deck. There it is, folks. All right, let's see if uh, it looks like. Okay, so she's going back to what looks like the high road pearl on the right lane, which is the ball she started off with on both lanes. on this lane the last time. She might just make a little bit of a move left. That's going to have to hustle. Oh, wow. And this is the first player we've seen get it back from here. Big wheel keep on turning. And shreds the rack. <laughs> she kind of had that look on her face like, hey, I got a little room to the right here. All right, so this looks like the move moving forward here. Different ball on each lane. Looks like a phase two. This ball to me looked like it, it, it did get back. Had a lot more teeth than the other ball, but I, I don't know how well this ball's been going through the pins. It could have been just the shots that she's thrown. I think if she gets the ball a little bit inside of where she got that last one, it'll retain some energy. Let's see what happens. It doesn't lay off. Definitely gets this one left of the last one. Not by much. And it breaks loose and leaves a very unusual 3 4. From the split conversion, gonna have the open frame number seven. Gave it a nice run. With the plastic ball. This caught a little too much of the three pin. So Hope can really open this match up here. 
Seventh frame looking for four in a row. Still in that infinite physics. Oh, that was... That was nice. She's got a very good game plan. She's just going to keep it in front of her. Use her ball speed to create hold. And as long as that 10 pin gets out of there, she's going to be tough to beat. She said that was one of the tricks to her big second round yesterday was sticking with that ball, just making the adjustments left. And as, as she said, doing something she enjoys doing. Just getting on it. Hooking it. Wow. Just like that. That's so exciting. I wanted to watch the intro again. Seven out of eight. Just keeps it right in front of her. It's the frozen rope. And there's the intro. There's so much fire from that strike. <laughs> Possible 279. Poor Tanya. She's pulling a Really good game. She can still shoot 234, though. Not over yet. Quite as far as the last one. No, but she's got a lot of power. And watch her chop this rack apart. Headpin comes back just for measure. Just in case that 10 pin thought about standing, which it didn't. Wise move on its part. This is a, this is a must strike situation here though. It would be a good idea. <laughs> She's bowled well, just had the split in the seventh frame. But uh, needs needs to find this one in the ninth. Yeah, Hope's already in the 240s with a couple of marks. So she's going to need to go off the sheet here and ask for some help. The 3610 stands in the ninth. That ball to me just it, it's very aggressive and she I think she used it to help get the ball back around the corner, but the last two shots have been inside a target and it broke loose. Fair makes the max for Tanya 214. So a matter of just uh, completing the next few frames here for Hope. She's going to move on to the semifinals of the Pepsi Classic. Take on Dasha Kovalova, the four-time champ. Coming up next. Definitely made a little move to the left. You can see where this shot, she liked it right over 18. Maybe just came out of it just a touch and leaves a ring in 10. But again, as Kelly Kulik said, 10 is great, 9 is good, especially when you've got a big lead. And that officially locks it up, so. All opportunities now for Hope to gain information. What can I head to the semifinal? We did see her go to the phase two on the fill ball in game number one.
no change here. How, however, going to stick with the infinite physics. Potentially make a move. Looking pretty tough here, JT. Yeah. I mean, that's just 10 back. Next couple of matches are going to be really interesting, especially this next one, because Dasha, this is her absolute wheelhouse. She's, ab I think, the best player in the world at doing what Hope Gramley's doing right now. And it, it's going to be a... A game versus A game. Good spot for the 4 9. Six will be the winning score here for Hope Cramley. 2 0, moving on to the semifinals at the PWBA Pepsi Classic event number two out of the three at the season ending Dallas Classic Series. The Tour Championship, the final major of 2022, kicks off tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern. 10 local time here in Dallas on Bowl TV. We have two rounds of match play, a final one on Monday, and then the CBS Sports Network final Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Got to give it to Tanya Lopez on a... Uh, Phenomenal performance here. Made a big run in the second round of match play today. You now potentially some of the uh, some of the nerves of the moment, the excitement coming down the stretch, but she was able to make some good shots, secure her spot. And she bowled well. And she bowled well, absolutely. Yeah, she bowled well here. Finishes it with a strike. You hear the crowd. 246 to 203. Hope Gramley defeats Tanya Lopez. Folks, two for two, Hope Gramley, the 22-year-old standout from McKendree University, two-time NTCA Player of the Year for Division II, an NCAA Titleist earlier this year in April. Championship round appearance at the Queens. She finished fifth, 14th at the U.S. Women's Open. And now moving on to the semifinals here. Ever since the 1890s, when Brunswick first got into bowling, we've always had the passion and we've always tried to create and innovate new products. Bowlers' interests are always changing, whether it's ball color, ball motion, lane conditions, and performance. At Brunswick, we always try to improve performance and discover new colors to meet those bowlers' tastes. Whether it's outstanding performance, beautiful colors, or just how it feels in your hands, Brunswick is bowling. See Dasha talking to her ball reps as well. I think that was uh, the Track Paragon Hybrid. 
that she was using for these past couple of shots. I know that D V eight ball right next to it, I believe the Verge was uh was something we've seen her use throughout the week as well. It seemed like those uh, last couple of shots did go pretty high flush as well, so Can we just mic up Dasha for all times now? <laughs> I, want, I want to know everything that she's saying. Yeah, right great now. reality show. <laughs> Dasha is going to start. Okay. Looks like she is going back to the verge, so took a look at the at the Paragon Hybrid. Seems to be a good choice. I think so. She knows what, she, what she's doing out there. Right over 18. Just left of the tracer. 10 back. Over 17 again. And I feel like she's probably looking 18 now, so that was probably just a touch right. And that's why it ended up light in the pocket. Light in the pocket carries very well on these pins. mentioned Aaron she was probably one move away from a lot of 10 pins and I mean she aced that shot that was pretty darn good we saw her leave couple of 10 pins earlier in the matches where she kind of fell out of it. She did not fall out of that one. She was rock solid. So going to probably have to make a subtle little move. Frame two, going to use the same ball on each lane. And Just absolutely pounded this one right over 18. And that is just 10 back. That's really nice. Dosh has been very hot or cold on TV. She's pulled some huge games, pulled some really low games. It was important for her to get off to a good start here tonight.
Looking for three, gonna push, does. Right over 18. 18's high flush. 17's flush. It's always a good sign. Open the third. Another quality shot here. Right over 18. Kind of sound like a broken record. It seems to be a good matchup when you hit it. Silly nasty wrap 10 in the second on the left lane. See if she just tries to make another carbon copy of that last shot. Gets it to dig out the 10. This is the pro's favorite hit. When this carries, you'll see them throw a lot of strikes. Do your job, six pin. Statistically, that hit only carries about 50% of the time, Aaron. So when you're getting it to strike, you can turn those into lots of strings. May only strike 50% of the time, but it looks cool 100% of the time. <laughs> Dasha for the four, bagger gets it. Just right over that 18 board once again. Sets up flush. Dasha gave us a tip of the week on one of our CBS telecasts a while back. She said uh, she pats that ball down four times and then does a little matador thing on the approach. Sets up and goes. That one over 19 at the arrows and you can see that one jumps high. So I don't think that was that bad. She might have grabbed it just a touch. It was definitely in just a little bit, but not much. We'll have our first look at Medusa. There we go. Snakes on a lane. Okay. Another good match shaping up here. Semifinals, PWBA Pepsi Classic USA Bowl in Dallas, Texas. I'm Aaron Smith alongside Jason Thomas. Hope Gramley, Dasha Kovalova squaring off for the opportunity to face Danielle McEwen in the title match. Asking for it to get back, and we saw her get away with that hit last game. In just the eighth. Yeah, 16 and a half at the arrow, so definitely a board, board and a half right of where she's trying to hit. And doesn't make it back.
Shoots it off the strike line and no trouble on the eight pin. 19 pin lead for Dasha Kovalova. Max scores. Dasha 278, Hope 259, so long way to go. Anything can happen. Push through the break point, but just enough to get them to start fighting up there. You can see and the power. It was good direction. She didn't miss her target. It was uh, maybe just a little fast, maybe just missed it a touch, but still catches enough of the pocket to knock them over for a strike. I think she likes lane 14 so far. Another great shot right over 18. Not giving it away. And when she hits the pocket, her strike percentage has been uh, pretty good. 100%. It's a good problem to have. <laughs> Double gets there, but can't dig out the 10. Six been trying to get back out to give it a love tap. It's a 50% hit, Aaron. But it looks cool 100% of the time when the 50% works. Spare ball, early celebration. <laughs> Fantastic. Tasha is the best. two have about as similar a look as you can have, Aaron. I mean, it's really going to come down to execution. Who can make the shots when they need them? If you're looking at max scores, Hope Gramley 259, Dasha Kovalova 258. Wow. Man. Get a look at this pin action. Right over 18. Post the shot. Five pin goes in front of the seven. Head pin goes the other way.
done. Ten pin match. Can't see the methodical process there for Dasha to get to get set up. She'll check the approach. It sets. Has been perfect on the right lane. One more time. That's just pretty. Perhaps why she elected to start the match. Textbook. A strike in the ninth cannot be shut out. pin on this lane last time. To set up the foundation frame nine pin, no. Great shot, posts it, catches it a little better than that one in the seventh, but high flush, leaves the nine pin. Problem on the spare, and with that, Jason Thomas. We have to invoke the Jim Stefanich rule. It's in play, it's out there. Possibility of a tie. Max score for both players. Now 238. Labels it right over her target. Great shot. Just gets enough of the 10 pin. Tenth frame upcoming. It's again max scores. 238 to 238. Hope can throw all three here. She cannot lose in regulation. Looking for the first hit. Oh, 10 pit. I think it was a good shot. Just right over a target. Six pin lays in the gutter. Not quite able to get the 10. Drops the max down to 218 with a spare and a strike. Dasha now just needs a mark. How important here, even though, as we mentioned, Dasha with a strike here would need a mark. If Dasha were to go nine and not convert the spare, that would be 216. So definitely want to make sure you cover the pocket here, force your opponent to fill the frame.
minutes left. Two sixteen, the tally. So nine miss here would be a tie. Anything better than that? Dasha Kovalova moves on, triple for the title. Danielle McCune waiting for her opportunity. She's like this lane so far. Four for four. Mixes him up. Dasha Kovalova is moving on to the championship match at the PWBA Pepsi Classic. Get a one more look at that. Just a little bit right. But caught enough of the fingers to get it back to the pocket. And she loved it. Ball change coming here. Might as well. A little, little jump to the left there. <laughs> not, not sure that's going to be the choice for the title match. So a third place finish here at the Pepsi Classic for Hope Gramley. A phenomenal finish in front of the hometown crowd. Family in attendance. The young talent on the PWBA Tour is going to make this uh, very fun to watch for years to come. professional tournaments. We won a lot of tournaments worldwide. I mean, uh, we won more in the last 10 years worldwide than any company. We, we make good bowling balls and we, and good players use our bowling balls because they can win with them. up here, Danielle McEwen, Dasha Kovalova. Only one can win PWBA Pepsi Classic title match. Starting two, up next. Two of the best we've got out here on tour. And I think these are the two best players at, at playing this kind of condition, longer pattern, keep the ball in front of you. These are the best we have. Dash looking to kick it off and bada bing. Right over 19, maybe 18, keeping it tight and slaps the 10 out. She liked it. Look at DMAC in the title match. And unable to get the 10 out. Looked like a 900 global reality. The ball of choice. This one? That one right there, yeah. Yeah, that one, uh, well, I was just going to say, it didn't look like that ball lost energy. It just looked like it never got into the roll. But to me, that means she's got some hold.
takes care of business in the first. And away we go. These two both have very disciplined pre-shot routines. They do the same thing every time, shot in and shot out. Oh, that's really good. Kewen, right over 18. It's a pretty common theme for the night. And that one just sends 10 straight back. She continues to like the right lane. Every shot she's made with this ball has struck over the course of these two games so far. She did try something else in her second shot in the tenth of this semifinal win over Hope Gramley to take a different look. strikes with that ball in hand on the right wing. Oh! Dancing to get the nine out. You see pins fly quite a bit here. The carry has been tough, but every now and then you get a friendly messenger. High on the head pin for seven. I mean, that looked really good. Right over 18. I think she probably tried to maybe soften up just a little bit to get the ball into an earlier roll to avoid that flat 10. And it just picked up a little too much. No trouble on the spare. Still looking to dial in the right lane. The Kovalova going three for three. She's going to have to make a decision, I think, Aaron. She's going to either have to decide she's going to keep it tight and try to jam it in there like she did in the first, or she's going to maybe have to make a little bit of a move left so that she can keep that slower ball speed and try to get the ball to go through the pins a little better. But I think early advantage to Dasha Kovalova. Looks absolutely solid on the left lane. Just a perfect shot there. Bold well. The step ladder on Thursday just ran into an absolute buzzsaw as Beer getting our ranks fired 268 at her. Yeah, on a really difficult condition. 225 for Danielle. Had some success from the number two seed in the past, Aaron. You have uh, you have reminded me of that, JT. A little, a little Didion Louisville. 
back in 2021, or excuse me, 2019. It's able to repeat at Executive Strike and Spare in 2021 as the top seed. Nearly left the nine last time. This one doesn't make it all the way back to eight. Definitely missed right here. She's been hitting 18 all night. That one out to 17. And not going to make it back. And she's you know, playing the hold. So when you're playing the hold and you miss right, it's not going to make it back. Wow. Goodness gracious. Just gets enough of the two pin. That's why you hook it at this spare. <laughs> Great reaction. Like I meant to do that. All right, let's see what Danielle does. Does she try to jam it in there again or? Move to the left. It looks like she moved a little left. And another flat 10. That was a good shot, but she's going to have to figure out a way to get the ball to go through the pins. Dasha's putting the pressure on. Danielle's going to have to strike on that lane eventually. Problem. Good news is she doesn't have to finish on that lane, but I do think she's going to have to figure out a way to strike on it the next two shots if she's going to have a chance in this match. Haugen in the chat saying he would make a ball change on that right lane. He's already seen enough. It's the way off, just enough. She's definitely dialed in on this lane. And the ball's going through the pins the right way. That one high flush. And I think she may be Go into the bag, Aaron, for something different on the right lane. He's chatting up here with Sean Ryan. Dasha is going to write a thank you note potentially to lane 14. When this is all said and done, she is perfect on that lane with that ball. One tester shot in the 10th one was already locked up. She has looked so good on the right lane. through the pre-shot routine again. Remember she missed a little right on this lane last time, left the 2-8. Probably just reminding herself, hey, keep this one in front of you. Make one more good shot. That's better. Much better. Great shot. She hit 
17 on the last one. That one hits 18. Gets every bit of it, and it's just 10 back. Ball change coming here, JT. Got to do it. Dasha with uh, her look is putting the pressure on and you've got to figure out a way to strike on this lane. 10 pins will not get it done. And this one never got right. A 15. Ball definitely picked up a lot more than the other one she was throwing, but I, I think she also missed a little in. And this is a really hard spare, and she's in big trouble if she can't make it. Open in the seventh, 128 now. Four, Danielle Max score drops to 218. Dasha on a 230 pace right now. Really important here not to get down on yourself and lose your good lane, because it's not over yet. Great shot there, right over 19. High flush again. Still alive, but she's gonna need some help. Dasha already in the 230, so if she were to stay clean the last three frames, it, it's over, but Couple of opens and Danielle McEwen could still steal the title. Eighth frame working on two in a row. Looking for seven out of eight and one more on this right lane gets it. It's right over 18, put it right there. It's the half pocket, hit the carry. Now it just needs a couple of marks. Actually, one mark. That was a, that was a great look into the camera there by Dasha. Probably not really looking at the camera, but uh, so just the big... Uh, Big breath and strike here. Exhale. We're it up. Got a hook. And it does. High five from Danielle. She knows that's it. It's a matter of finishing it up. A dash, a couple of them. It's going to win our first title of 2022. Big smile over there. Her fifth PWBA Tour title. Boy, it's such a cruel game, Aaron. I mean, she pulled a really good game. She just made the one bad shot in the seventh on the ball change. But I would think it was the right move. But I mean, 278s are hard to beat. Huh. Hopefully, Emil Williams isn't watching. But she, she bowled a great game on this left lane. Every shot just flush in the pocket. That'll be another great tournament here for Danielle. 
but unfortunately another runner-up finish for her this season as the top seed. One ninety five the final tally. It's an awfully good one ninety five. Mm -hmm. But a little victory lap here for Dasha. Continues the streak on the right lane. Dasha Kovalova, your 2022 PWBA Pepsi Classic Champion. I I'm curious, JT, I know she's had some experiences after winning events with, uh, with liquids uh, after her 300 at the Louisville so Open in 2019. A, a soft drink bath here, maybe? A I, little Pepsi? I, I'm just saying, it's... Uh, I would certainly be uh, on the lookout if I were her. I, I would be hesitant for sure, but uh, what a performance here. 228 to 226, entering in the semifinal semi match against Hope Gramley. And then looking to put up her 11th strike here in the title match. For good measure. Tasha never disappoints on the mic. We'll uh, we'll get here jo get her joining us here on Bold TV in just a couple moments. She'll get some photos done as well. Two seventy eight to one ninety five. The final tally. Tasha Kovalova, your twenty twenty two PWBA Pepsi Classic champion. Take a look at the uh, the photos. Got got to have the Pepsi in there, of course. Dasha's arms might get tired from holding the trophy and the Pepsi up there. I think they're calling, uh, calling mom up there for a few photos as well.
very cool stuff right here. Dasha Kovalova, five-time PWBA Tour champion. And we will hear from her in just a couple moments. Big thank you to everyone here for joining us. We're not done yet, though, on Bowl TV, folks. Tour Championship is starting up tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, opening round of competition. Our guy, Emil Williams, Jr., will be back to join the excitement as well. Josh and Miss Susie from here at USA Bowl. Getting their photos as well. Just a, a big thank you again to USA Bowl. All the hard work, the effort this week from the staff. Incredibly accommodating for the bowlers, for us, for everybody making their way here. to make this Dallas Classic Series. Fighting through the fans to join us here on Bowl TV now. Happy tears from Dasha Kovalova. All right, and uh, with that, Dasha, hello. Hi. How are you doing? You know what? Better than my last two TV shows. Let me tell you that. I'm evening it out. <laughs> it, it, it's all about finding a happy medium. You were able to do that and uh, strike a bunch. So congratulations, first and foremost, on the Pepsi Classic title here. Uh, one of the things we noted throughout the title match and the semifinal was it seemed like you really, 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 really liked the right lane. Uh, and outside of trying that fill ball or that second shot uh, in the matchup against Hope, you struck on every shot on the right lane. Did you know that? No, I was kind of freaking out, so I don't remember. I just, I just know that if it's 44 feet and my damn good verge works, that's all I can do. <laughs> I'm a one-trick pony, guys. Hey, there, there's nothing wrong with that. But we've seen the versatility out there this tour, uh, or this year on tour. Uh, you've made a lot of match play appearances, a lot of top 12s. You put yourself into position to win a lot. You've made a couple shows. What's it mean to break through again and uh, you know claim this fifth title, knowing you've uh, you've been so close this season? I was so nervous because, you know, you remember my record on the shows. Everybody remembers. It's like 150, 170, you know. So I was nervous. And then I struck four times in a row. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going <laughs> to shoot more than 150. <laughs> and then I got very excited, and then I just kind of bowled. So it means a lot because, honestly, I was doubting myself a lot, like as we all do. And I really don't know where to look, so I'm just kind of looking around. All right, well... We can look everywhere. You're the champ. Okay. You can look wherever you want, actually. So, uh, I look at you. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, Dasha. Um, you know, talk a little bit about uh, just coming in, uh, obviously, a couple games before it. Uh, what did you guys see out there that, um, you know, made that uh, that damn good verge, the cho ball choice? We saw, uh, you know, the Paragon, Paragon Hybrid come out during the practice session mm -hmm. as well. Uh, what was the final call for choosing that ball? smooth um well first of all that's my new damn good verse they just drilled it before the tv show because my old one didn't didn't do the thing that it was supposed to do so they drilled me a new one and the damn good verge is smoother and more controllable so i knew if i miss in it would hold hopefully and it did so um that's why i chose that ball and you know again damn good verge is my ride or die gotcha so that last one turned into a damn bad verge after a while is that what you're saying Nice one. Hey, hey. Top. I'm here all week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dasha. Uh, obviously, there's more work to do this week. So uh, the Tour Championship coming up next. Uh, you get the opportunity to, uh, you know, take 
take a moment, enjoy this victory, but uh, a major coming up, and obviously uh, you want to finish the season on a, on a strong note as well. Just talk a little bit about uh, how you're going to enjoy this moment and uh, how you're going to get uh, back and focused and ready to go for tomorrow. Well, I'm going to go eat, I'm going to sleep, and I'm going to get to bowl a lot of games tomorrow all over again on the pattern that I threw maybe two shots during practice, so we'll see how that turns out. Well, you'll get 16 games uh, worth of shots to uh, figure it out tomorrow, so you got that to look forward to, which is nice. That's a lot of games. I, uh, that is a lot of games. I hope I'll figure it out faster than 16 games, because otherwise I'm kind of out of the window for that. It's, it's a bold strategy not to. Yes. But uh, I, I think you're going to figure it out soon. Uh, you know, Dasha, we, uh, we talked about it a little bit uh, just in fun after you wrapped up the title. Uh, when you want, when you shot 300 in Louisville in 2019, uh, after the fact, you were uh, greeted by f several bowlers with outside with the the energy drink bath, uh, and now you win another event with a drink involved. Are you a little terrified about uh, what the fellow competitors might be having in store for you right now? Well, as we see, uh, there's not a lot of people around. I hope so <laughs> nobody's gonna spill a sticky drink onto me because, you know, that jersey reeked of. Rockstar for weeks, <laughs> for weeks, and I I just hope they'll be nice to your good old Dasha. She had a rough year. It's not poor sticky drinks on her. It's bad for the floor here too. So yeah, it's bad for environment. But keep an eye out just in case. Where <laughs> is the back door exit? Where do I go <laughs> so that no people will see me? Uh, I, I, that's gonna be tough now because I think uh, there's folks waiting for autographs and all that fun stuff for you as well. So. But uh, Dasha, congratulations. Uh, I, I know, I'm sure a special moment getting to share it with your mom out there as yes. well. Uh, and just uh, thank you for putting on a show for us on Bowl TV and uh, taking welcome. home another title. Anytime, anytime. I, my damn good verge works on 44. I'll put on a show for you. Otherwise, eh. Hit or miss. <laughs> Hit or miss, I, I, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, Dasha, uh, enjoy the moment. We'll see you tomorrow back on Bowl TV. And uh, congratulations again on thank you. title number five. Yes, exciting. All right, everybody, Dasha Kovalova making her way to the fans. She's got autographs to sign, folks. Five-time PWBA Tour champion. Dasha Kovalova. All right, folks, JT says it's time. We're going to wrap things up here uh, from... USA Bowl, Dallas, Texas, PWBA Pepsi Classic. Dasha Kovalova is going to be your champion here in 2022, 278 to 195 victory over top seed Danielle McEwen. As we mentioned, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. local time here at USA Bowl for the first round of qualifying, or excuse me, match play at the PWBA Tour Championship, the final event, the final major, going to get underway. Uh, with that, we're going to start preparing, get excited, get everything reset for that excitement. The top 24 players will be making their way back to the lanes for 24 games of match play over two days to determine the top five for the Stepladder Finals Tuesday on CBS Sports Network. We want to thank everybody for joining us here on Bowl TV for the Stepladder Finals and throughout the course of the week of the Dallas Classic Series. A big thank you to Brunswick. Uh, Storm and Roto Grip. We gave away a Brunswick Defender today, as well as a Roto Grip ball and a Storm ball a little bit earlier. So, big thank you to them for their continued support. Kegel, the official lane maintenance provider for the PWBA Tour, USBC, BPAA, and their board of directors. And of course, all the athletes out on the tour each and every week, all the dedication to the game. Uh, we appreciate everything they do for us, all the accessibility. Uh, of course, Dasha for uh, coming in and joining us after the victory. And finally, all you great folks out there, thank you for being part of the Bowl TV community. We look forward to joining you once again tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, the time we'll kick things off again. So for USA Bowl staff, the PWBA and IBC staff, the Bowl TV team, Jason Thomas, I'm Aaron Smith, signing off from USA Bowl for tonight. Everybody have a great Saturday. Take care, and remember, as always, on Bowl TV, bowling lives here.